So in the previous video, we kind of finished up the top net and how that works. And that kind of concludes the retargeting uh, part of this talk. Um, in the uh, next kind of series of video, I want to talk about these um, networks down here. I have one on smoothing clips and another one on basically taking um, a retargeted animation and using that as uh, animation for a crowd agent and how you go about doing that. Um, they're not strictly about retargeting, but I figure anybody who'd be interested in retargeting, you know, chances are is using motion capture data and might be interested in smoothing motion. And, you know, chances are if you have a database of animation that you're retargeting, um, particularly at a scale like this, you're probably doing that to accommodate uh, crowd simulation. So um, I, I thought it would be uh, useful to um, include that as well. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is this uh, smoothing uh, animation um, uh, network. So I have two methods here. Um, if you already saw my Houdini 18.5 video on retargeting the uh, CMU database, you would have seen this technique already. So you're probably already familiar with it. Um, you can just skip to the next video where I'll be talking about this one right here. And in this one, I'm using the smooth motion SOP, um, which is new in Houdini 19.5 to smooth the motion of the skeleton. Uh, they're both valid techniques uh, and perfectly valid ways of working. Um, they're just different ways to skin a cat and you may prefer one result on the other. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that you had um, uh, both options. So we'll uh, start with this one. Um, so here I'm reading uh, the motion capture data from the uh, animation archive. And if you uh, go to the CMU's uh, um, website and look at the notes, you, you know one of the things that they'll say is that they have you know, a lot of their animation has noise in the hands and in the toes. Uh, so, you know, um, being able to kind of filter that stuff out is uh, useful and important. Um, so we're bringing this in. Uh, this is obviously being evaluated one frame at a time. Uh, I'm going to make it into a motion clip. So basically taking all of the animation, uh, you know, the skeleton at each time sample and um, basically shoving it into a single piece of geometry. And then I have this motion clip extract, uh, which has this really nice feature for motion trails. And what that does is it basically makes a curve uh, out of every joint um, across you know, the, uh, the, the time frame. Uh, once I've done that, I you know, can use any kind of modeling operation I want to kind of manipulate these. In this case, I'm just using a smooth operation to kind of smooth this out and you know can really really exaggerate this by you know setting it to i don't know a thousand um you can see that really smooths out um but uh you don't have to do that you can also do it uh on the entire uh, or you don't have to do it for every joint you can target specific joints so i'm taking the uh name attribute it's a, a point attribute promoting it to primitive um which we now have a name attribute per curve, and I can basically specify um, which uh, curves I wanna uh, work on and by extension with joints, and then I can just smooth those ones specifically. Um, so uh, quite a bit of control that you have there. Um, yeah, so uh, going back to this example here, I just have a switch stop to switch between the two. Uh, and again, this is very exaggerated, but uh, I'll, I'll, this I'm doing this for, um, there's a reason why I want to smooth it out to this degree. Uh, it's to illustrate something downstream. Um, and here I'm just taking those positions and pushing them back to the original uh, motion clip extract. Uh, I'm feeding this into a motion clip update. And this is basically why I wanted to uh, do something that was so exaggerated. So you could really see uh, this is altering the incoming animation uh, you know, significantly so that you can actually visualize that. If I turn this down to something a little bit more sane, you know, the, the differences are there, but you know, maybe not as 
uh, a, a little more subtle, right? But uh, you now have this smooth motion in there. Uh, sending this to a motion clip evaluate. So we now have, you know, evaluating uh, uh, per frame. And then I have a couple operators here. I have these reorient joint operators. And when you do smoothing and manipulation like this, often you'll have to reorient the joints uh, based off the original skeleton. And just to kind of give you a bit of an appreciation for what this does, if we kind of look down here at the feet of these guys, uh, that's a little subtle. Let me uh, see if we can find a better frame. One where he's walking in. There we go. Yeah. So it, you can see it a little bit on this heel, right? By it just corrects the orientation of that uh, joint. Uh, I also have a separate one that I'm running. Uh, on the toes uh, without a second input, and it, you can, you know, very clearly see the the difference there. So when working with that work, this workflow, this is kind of have something you have to compensate for. Um, once that's done, I feed it through the full body IK um, using the original skeleton as the target, and there we go. Uh, we that's our result. And that's basically the end of this workflow. Um, I uh, will end this video here and talk to you in the next one about uh, this smooth motion stop.